Alright, uh, those that are watching, um, it's just me, Dr. Obli uh, Dr. Oblivion, uh, Professor Oliver is, um, last week, if you didn't know, he took a little bit of a tumble and um, he's in the hospital. I'm trying to uh, talk to him and he's a little out of it, so uh, he said he could get on the video and we could talk to him for a second. So let me let me get him on. All right, just one second. I gotta make a call here. Hello. 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 How you doing, yeah. Professor Oliver? Who's, who's that? It's 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 Michael Branson Smith. Oh, I feel lovely here. You feel good? Amazing. Whoa. Wow. Where are you? I fell. Yes, I did. But I yeah, fell you fell down. Now. It feels you fell great. better. I'm still on my journey to the center of the internet. You know. You are. Oh, good. I'm very close. I can feel it now. Well, I can't feel my legs, but I can feel I'm almost to the center of the internet. Oh my, Professor Oliver. I don't Oliver? think so. What? No, no. I feel fantastic. Oh, okay. I'm That's get back great. To my exercises, though. Thank you. Oh, all right. Well, we hope you feel yes. better. Good luck. Uh, are you swimming? Oh, okay. Good luck. Uh, we'll see you soon. Wow, that was that was pretty interesting. Um, well, he asked that I uh, go through this coming week's um, assignments, which involve uh, getting into design and an extension of the visual assignments on DS106. And I have a good friend, um, uh, Chris Stein from the Borough Manhattan Community College at CUNY, who's going to join us in just a moment. And he's going to talk about design and a lot of the assignment ideas that exist in DS106. And just general talk about design and, and how we think about uh, what makes good design. All right? So let me get him on board. There we go. All right. Hello. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Thanks for uh, joining DS106. I know no you problem. know about DS106, but this is your first uh, adventure, right? Yes, that's right. I'm uh, I'm a virgin in that respect. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so how did you think uh, Professor Oliver looked? He was. He's quite a character, I guess. I, I'd say. <laughs> Um, I have to uh, think. Of, maybe think of another character we can add to, the, to that mix. <laughs> Please do. Um, tell us uh, a little bit about uh, what you do, and and um, and so that the uh, the followers will know. All right. Well, right now I'm a, a professor at the Borough of Manhattan Community College. I teach in the Media Arts and Technology Department. Uh, I teach web design uh, and multimedia programming. Um, sort of, I'm not the, uh, we're sort of the front end side of things, you might say. There's the computer science department that handles Java and all those languages like that, and we get to deal with audio and video and all sorts of fun things like that. Uh -huh. And also, and sort of on the side, I also GMC still truck truck try to keep in touch all with times when it's just you uh, what I used to do, which is general new media development, I don't hear the term new media much anymore. For those times when nothing and that was is everything from websites to we little applications to you know, uh, video or uh, and even truck databases your percent and so forth. So months, I usually have one or two projects, Sierra, projects a year that I keep year up on with that uh, radio, just to make sure that I sort of know what's NFL going on in the industry and don't become a, a crusty old academic salted away somewhere. So um, just so you know, I apologize. The uh, Justin DV, uh, TV bots ads uh, covered a little bit of that at the end, so you didn't hear it because you're just hearing me, but our audience did. Um, so for the most part, whoops. Don't worry, there's no live okay. viewer at the moment. <laughs> I think it's just you monitoring the broadcast. So um, right. 
I'm going to bring up this document that uh, links to a lot of. Well, let's actually let's just talk this. So, uh, what what do you think is in, important in design? It's a great question. There's a number of things that are important, and, and um, there's obviously there's sort of two sides. There's some different sides to design. So. There is what everyone usually thinks about, which are the more formal designs things that you use, which are color and line and, and all those sort of um, theoretical parts of design, and plus the, the tools that people use of whatever, whatever it is, Photoshop or Flash or your HTML in it. But often, you know, when design comes, at, comes out into the real world and you actually have to do design, what it really is often about is talking to somebody, to an audience, right? So there's an audience somewhere that you're trying to communicate something to. It um, it could be a paid gig where you often have two audiences, so to speak. You have your client who wants some message out, and you have their audience who you have to get the message to, or it could be something for yourself. But um, I'm going to show you, a, there's an example I want to see a little later, too, that, that's an art, a piece of art. And some people sometimes can argue that design, one of the differences is that you always have this audience you're trying to fulfill, whether it's art is more of a personal thing. But I still think the two are, are both the same uh, in the sense that you really, you know, it, it's, it's speaking to someone. I, think, I don't think most artists want to speak to nobody uh, when, they, when they create their art. And then, of course, also there's the idea of context, too, which I think that is important as well. Um, for your audience or whoever it is to understand the design that you're doing, you have to understand what context um, your work is in and also what they're bringing to it and, and the context they are. And I think that even in a lot of the assignments that show up, that, that came up well. You know, if, if you're doing the icon assignment and someone hasn't seen the movie that you've done, uh, then they have a, a big piece of context that's missing for them in terms of that. Yeah, why don't we bring that up and uh, talk about it for a second. Um, I have the uh, Google Doc open where we have a bunch of links here, and this is one of um, probably one of the more of a come on, uh -oh, lost our link. Let's go down here. Can I edit this? Yeah. Are you in there? Oh, it doesn't want to let me edit. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do I? No, I'm in there. You got it? Okay. I think it's because you're in there. Why don't you close the document for a second and open sure. it, uh, not in the Hangout. See if that helps. All right. Yeah, let me... Um... Or I can just open it in a separate window. Not a big deal. Wait one second. Futzing is a big part of uh, DS106, no matter what, anyway. <laughs> it's a big part of this in general. I mean, I think that's another part of design that... Um, I found a lot of people don't get is they'll see a great work of design uh, and, and want to emulate it, but then not realize that whoever designed that took time and different iterations to get there. That right. pretty much no one just all of a sudden says, "Ah, I know what I'm going to create," and sits down and uh, one second. The Justin Dimon TV ad is on again. That was awesome. That was our brought to you by Virginia Beach. <laughs> it's for lovers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have it open open here, and for some reason, if I get in, I've lost it on the Hangout. Damn you, Google. Here we go. So we have the four icon challenge, and um, this was base inspired by. Um, let's bring this up. I'm going to bring this over. Oops. Um, this is inspired by a designer named Kyle Tizak, and he was looking to do um, stories, whether they were movies or books or um, TV shows, and he would reduce uh, the story elements into two images. And uh, for Reservoir Dogs, in, and you mentioned this context. You have to kind of know the movies to understand it. Um, so, right. Um, and so that's a that's a big part of it in figuring this all out. But I think what's ex fantastic is 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 it's the choices you have to make. And a big part of the assignment is leaving it open and seeing if your audience can figure it out. 
Right. And that was actually something else I, we were talking about before that I wanted to mention as well. That I think that's really nice about, um, especially the internet, I seem, seems to breed this more in the DS106 DS class in general is it's sort of open to newer forms of storytelling where they're not always prescriptive. Uh, you know, some forms of storytelling, whoever's telling the story wants you to go through the exact ideas and stories that they're trying to get, get you to go through. And in an assignment like this, there's really a, a few different stories that are going on, right? So there's um, the original story, whatever movie it was, and then you, when you're looking at it, you have to like go back and try to recall that yourself. So there's sort of your version of the movie and what was important to you, and then there's the, the creator's version who, who made the icons, and you're, and you're trying to now match up all three of those things to see if you first get their icons and whether you see they're appropriate or not. Right. Um, and, and look at it that way. And it's a much more active form of storytelling, I think, that's that's pretty compelling. So there's a, here's a couple um, whoops, a couple of different uh, pieces of design that we've done. This is uh, Timmy Boy. He reveals the um, the name of the movie itself, but the Matrix the Matrix is something everybody pretty knows. Um, right. Where he gets the uh, the the windowed shades, the the the, the shaded shades. Or no. <laughs> Kanye West version of the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I close some of these. But that, that, that's also, I think, one of the nice things about this assignment too. Though, is, I mean, obviously, you could, if you have the time, you could create them yourself um, and tailor the icons a little bit more exactly to it. Um, but there's also sort of a process of, you know, when you have to, when you're finding other people's icons, it, it brings that yet another sort of level to what you're trying to do when you're telling the story and you're working with something that's already existing and already there. Right. You know, there is a way, let me share one where someone was actually just uh, drawing the icons, um, which was kind of cool. I don't, re I don't know exactly how he, uh, she did the, um, this is it, here we go. And this one I didn't get when I saw it, but um, Jim Groom did, it was the, um, Goonies, but he basically uh -huh. hand drew it and scanned it, which is yes. awesome. I love that. So you know, you can search for images on the internet. You can use this resource that's in this Google Doc, which we'll share the Noun Project, which is pretty awesome. These are all just so you know. Every single one of these icons is um, is basically Creative Commons license, so you're allowed to use these. And there's I think there's hundreds, hundreds of them. It's pretty great. Um, so, what other assignments? I asked you to look through some of them, and then what ones may, were interesting to you, and why? Well, actually, I think in a lot of ways, all the uh, all the assignments were, were interesting to me in, in different ways. Um, let me pull back the get that document there. Um, so, the one of the other ones uh, that we're looking at was the Exquisite Corpse um, yeah. assignment. There weren't yeah. a lot of, of takers on that so far, yeah, um, let's look at that. which is actually an interesting because it's actually it's another twist on the the original game. Um, one thing that isn't in this assignment that is sort of in the original is that it's uh, a bit it's a more of a back and forth between a couple different people. Right. Right. It's not just one person necessarily doing it. Yeah, that, that well, the the original idea of the ex exquisite corpse, um, you know, comes from the surrealists, and it was around exactly. poetry first, and then they turned it into a shared uh, building of images. And these are some examples, um, you know, where you you pass around a sheet of paper while in a coffee shop. Uh, do your portion of the image and, and, and send it along. And um, the DS-106 uh, assignment is more around like constructing in an image from um, a variety of digital pieces, but for the most part it encourages you to use your own pieces but and not pass it along. Um, so right. what's, what, I, what I think is funny is I actually um, just uh, describe, decided to do uh, uh, an exquisite corporate idea that would be uh, collaborative. 
um, and I'm hoping that it'll catch on. Uh, Jim Grooms uh, got his <laughs> Baba stock going on, so I built this open image in Google Docs that you can upload image to uh, images to and um, and add anything you want. You can add text for poetry or images, and I'm going to see if. I might be able to encourage some people to do that because I think that would be because one of the cool things is that you can ultimately see the revisions and we can look at it over time and I was thinking how awesome it would be to like animate that later on you know and that would be an right. awesome story yes um, in, 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 all, in being able to get the process sort of how it goes as well I mean I think that's one of the things that I liked about about that too, and, and, and certain people uh, more than others in their description of the assignment talk a bit about their process. Yes, that's very um, narrating. Narrating it, and that you know the, that it's, it's a nice part about it too because it, it one it can give some people context who don't have uh, a lot of context um, for it before, whether it's the movie that they didn't watch or whatever else they didn't didn't do, uh, and also can give people ideas and inspiration um, to do different things. And that was there's there's a there's a I think one of the tough things about design often is the idea of the blank page, uh, yeah. <laughs> where you you kind of sit there and it's like, all right, I got to make something now, and I'm not sure what to make. And that was part of what I liked too about the uh, also the original Exquisite Corpse is that you know there's not as much pressure to do the whole thing, right? You often come into something part way done, and then it's like, oh, I can feed off of that and add on to it and do it. Uh, and being able to open yourself up a little bit to inspiration from whatever happens to be around or what comes there uh, and not thinking that everything is you know so I think some people also have an idea that design is somehow this wholly original creative thing that just comes directly from your mind and, and doesn't necessarily have any other uh, precedence or anything coming there and it's really often your sort of filtering and interpretation of all the other things that you've experienced and things that are around you and often you have to kind of open yourself up a little bit to those when you're getting into one of those positions where you're stuck a bit yeah I'll freely admit I steal um, most design ideas. <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> I mean, I look at, I look through books, I look through, you know, the web. It doesn't matter. Like I'm, I'm always like game for a good idea that I can turn into my own. And that's what's so cool about DS106 is it really says, and if you take on that job of narrating your process like doing your best to describe how and why you made something and not just what you made as a pre as part of the pre presentation you're you're more likely to see that to happen right so what else do you want to is there another one you want to look at um well actually now that we're talking about the, the the process and stuff maybe we can um look at the the bulls example that i um Oh, that link okay. to Picasso's yeah. The Bulls. Right. Um, uh, I and so also, it's. Yeah. <laughs> I have so much open here. Is it the bottom? Yeah, uh, I think so. It's near the bottom. Sort of other examples. Oh, we got it. Here we go. The Princeton link or the book cover? Yeah, I think it. Book think cover. The Princeton link. The book cover is just one I threw in there for you guys, um, and we can talk <laughs> about that too. Um, oh, yeah, I'll look we, for that. Yeah. All right, yeah, here it I'll, is. There we go. There's the bull. Right. So, you know, first of all, this is obviously like one of considered possibly the greatest artist of the last dec last century. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and opening himself up in this a little bit to showing a, a process that he was going through. Right. Um, and so, you know, if you kind of look at it, it's sort of a, a it's a minimalist one in the sense that he's going from a okay, people, show me the a picture of it. We gotta wait for the next uh, ad. Make it work. Booking a flight by Brought you by Expedia. Stitch together a yeah. better deal. It's a hint and one cut. Ooh, see what Anandra did? Booking your flight and hotel at the same time. No, we got it. Uh, hotels and airlines won't let Expedia uh, show separately. Book it. Formula for for the major for the self-broadcast. Where your yes. book matters. Expedia. Phew, it's over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so there's so he he sort of takes you into his own process a little bit, right? And for him that meant partly drawing the bull 
as a bowl at first. Right. And then as if you look at the, the images as they go, in each successive image, he's kind of valuing one thing more than another mm. um, and trying to separate them out. I mean, one, one of the things even if you just kind of look at the tail of the bull, um, it, you know, at first he has his tail here, um, and <clears throat> it's there's not a lot to it. In the second one, the tail actually gets kind of lost a little bit, right? Yeah, because uh, there, there's, right. no, there's no contrast, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so in the third one, he says, "All right, I need to show the tail more, so I'm going to give some contrast." And I'm, these are a few formal ideas too. I'm talking about in design, and one is contrast. That darker and lighter colors, things stand out. You know, if they're uh, a, a different kind of color and contrast. Uh, and then sort of um, after that, um, it, the tail kind of continues on the same a little bit. Then in the sixth one, yep. he says, mm -hmm. well, I can make it stand out even more by pulling it off of the body, right? Mm -hmm. So now the tail comes out of the body um, and stands out a bit more. Um, and then he makes the end of the tail large for a few frames uh, to give it a little bit more emphasis even then. He has a sort of the, I don't even know what that part of the tail is called, but the the part with the fur on it, um, until he, <laughs> he uh, <laughs> until he gets to the final two where he's decided to really like cut out everything else, and so it becomes again uh, just a simple line um, of it. Yeah, it's uh, and, pretty and, and, cool. Yeah, and, and you can also watch. I mean, another good thing to look at is the head in this one because basically right. he's decided that the head is not important, and in every successive image, it's kind of gets smaller and less important as it goes along until it's just this very tiny little circle at the at the last one. Yeah, and, it just uh, holds the horns and that's it. Right, so it's sort of like the bull is the horns and the tail and the legs and the body, but right. what, everything else. Right. And, and that's part of design too, I think, in that you, you're making decisions that are your own decisions and somewhat subjective and for a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and then other people may disagree or have different decisions, but it's, it's you know the ones that you're making and you kind of can take them through and, and, and go with that decision and, and take it to its its logical conclusion. Yeah, and I like how, I mean, it was really the equivalent of um, uh, Picasso was re, re, reducing it into an icon, you know, it was like, right. it, was, it was this symbol, it was this representation of, uh, of a bull. I mean, and we recognize it as a bull still, but he showed this process of how he got there, and that's awesome. I mean, Whenever I do uh, design, I like to um, I do logo design a little bit here and there, and and I'll have this uh, Illustrator um, document that's just filled, 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 filled with uh, images and and other other mm -hmm. people's ideas, and I'll slowly you know pick and choose and do iterations on this one big space, and I love Illustrator that you can do that. Um, and you eventually find the thing that's going to work for you. Um, yeah, that's how I work on it. But whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think you're probably not alone at all. I mean, you know, a lot of people there's the sort of more formal words that often is a mood board, right? That a lot of uh, designers use, where they get images and other things out there and just kind of put them together uh, that that influence what they're going to do. And then sometimes you can draw directly from it, and other times it may just sort of give you a feeling or a color or something else that you end up using uh, in, in the design when you're using it. Um, awesome. But not to be afraid to collect all those things together. Sweet. So um, I know I'm, uh, I'm, I, I'm on a time limit with you. It's my fault. We were waiting for DTLT and uh, the cog dog. Um, and, and Timmy it's Boy, okay, I, yeah. I, I didn't want a, a cross cast because I wouldn't wouldn't have gotten any viewers. I see we have uh, one right now. I'm not counting you, Chris, who's just monitoring. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, well, I, I have a couple more minutes too. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, uh, so what else one wanna... thing I just I'll just I'll just tell you about the the link I sent. So the um the the journey to the center of the earth link is a is a a book cover by a, a designer. Um, I'm gonna mess up her name now. It's like uh, Viral Peters or Peters, um, yeah, who's name. from I believe the Netherlands and um. It's kind of cool just because I think it's almost like the four icon assignment for the book. Ooh, um, yeah. Because the, the different layers that she does right. um, in it sort of tell the story of, of, what, of the journey um, a, as it goes along. So I just thought that one was kind of both with your journey to the center of the internet and the four icon assignment. It kind of melded the two together. Um, yeah. I love the peeling back of the layers too, especially. Yes. Mm. This is beautiful too. Yeah, 
And, and she actually, if, if you don't know her work that much, uh, she's a, a big uh, illustrator person. Um, and she also does a lot of designs that are sort of mathematical based, um, using circles or shapes like that and multiplying them on each other uh, mm -hmm. and finding things out that way. And that's actually another thing we haven't talked about much, but that's another entry into design a lot of people are having now where they have people who write things like algorithms to help them come up with an idea for a design, you know, where it, it kind of will start to create things and, and part of their design process is actually writing the algorithm to, um, to create the design. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that, yeah, that, I mean, there, there's one assignment that's called um, uh, averaging uh, flicker images. You have to have Photoshop to do it. It's, it's using this uh, tool to composite all these images and you basically get an abstract mush for the most part <laughs> unless you <laughs> really really try to steer it with a few uh, uh, specific colors and patterns um, right. but that's an algorithm and, and it's ama and it has the, it makes these am amazing like um, patterns that you can use as part of compositions that's what I liked about it um, right. So I'll have to check that one out too. It sounds interesting. Yeah, there, and and Timmy Boy gives a, a great tutorial. I mean, it was one of those things where you I actually learned something new in Photoshop uh, through DS One Six, which was awesome. Right. So. Right. Uh, you know, and that's another part, obviously, to this that we haven't talked much about. Um, because it's sort of more straightforward is learning the skills and how to work Photoshop and things and. It's it's the, the the part for me is it's it's good to learn them and, and you can work faster and and more intuitively when you do but don't ever confuse that with you know learning design or knowing design you know? right in the end you tend to go through this phase where you just want to learn all these tools and then you pull back and kind of say well now I really want to learn how to be a designer or or do do design right uh, and and sort of the last links I put in there are just sort of more food for thought uh, part of this too I don't know if you guys have talked about it much is that design with I call it a capital D is kind of been coming more to the forefront from a business perspective. Oh uh, sorry, another ad. But I'll open your design with me in the meantime. Virginia Beach again. Oh shit, that that uh, uh you went to the uh, objectify trailer, is that what you were looking for? Uh, that was well. That was one of them because this is um, objectified is talking about design of objects and how it relates to our right. life. Oh, um, the IDEO stuff! I love. Yeah. Um, is there a spe specific one you want to bring up? Me Not bring necessarily. Up? Um, I can just talk about it in general. Okay. Um, you know, uh, IDEO is one of these uh, design companies, um, and you know. Fifteen years ago, a design company was the people you went to and said, we're making a new fork or toaster or whatever, and you make it look beautiful. Um, right. And about ten years ago, that started sort of changing to where um, the design people were really helping to influence... Uh, sorry, I ap apologize. Um, uh, the, it's fun the, it's the design off. people were now being more influential in the marketing of the product, the conceptual part of the product, before it was even created, and using the tools of designers in, in terms of thinking and thinking creatively to help businesses think more creatively about what they were making, how they were making it, uh, and the sort of whole ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so design has sort of come of age in that perspective, that it's more than just about making a product look beautiful. It's about the whole thing. How do people use it? How does it fit in with mm -hmm. the environment and everything like yeah. that? I remember uh, watching Objectify, and they were talking about their process for making a better uh, set of like head shears, you know, like for clipping bushes. And they said, well, one of the things they do is they try to imagine the weakest person that might use them, and then compare that to the strongest uh, person. Right. And then, and so, and then, d despite that, they're thinking about mechanical problems. They're also coming up with this beautiful looking uh, pair of head shears. <laughs> right, right. You know, so. Well, I've, on, on that note, I do have to go. Okay, <laughs> thanks for all the links. I'm going to share them out on, the, on, a, sure. on my site. And thank you so much, Chris, for joining us. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'll see you in the CUNY uh, interlopes here and there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye, Chris. Bye. All right, so um, 
That's pretty much. Here, let me get myself up. Here we go. Yes. Um, that's it. Um, we're going to. I'm going to make a blog post that uh, links this video and also the Google Doc with the resources we set up and um, talk about the assignments uh, for the next week. Um, this is Michael Branson Smith for DS 106 for life.